Hello everyone, this you can see in here, this will be a different video from a normal one. We're gonna do and open a pre-release kit and build a pre-release deck from it. We recorded the video at Mox in a Hole on an actual live pre-release, so apologies about the quality. As you can see, we are a bit in a rush because it is supposed to be a timed event. Once opening the box, showing the pop-up counters it contains inside the kit. We will then check the number of packs, everything's there and present and correct. We do have the usual spin down dice, which I'll tend to ignore because I have so many of them now. And then we have the six play booster packs. A little explanation of how to build a pre-release deck. You can pause the video here if you like to read it. I just keep it there for a bit for you guys. And on the other side, there is a picture. Okay, let's move on. After that, we are opening our promo pack booster which is a separate pack containing an arena promo code which I will not show you because I already used it and a foil date stamped promo card which is at this point uh, looks like Arachthos joins up rare which is red and black so that kind of puts us into uh, an avenue of how to build a deck already you can see from now, now on, we are just opening all the packs. I'm not reading all the cards at this point. I am just trying to figure out what sort of deck I'm going to build. As you can see, I sort them by color. And I fall around to try and find the space, enough space to for you guys to can, you can see how it works. Normally I post them in white, blue, black, red, green, multicolor artifact land pile and the basic lens separate. You can see I'm not checking any cards. I am just looking at the colors at this point because uh, in a normal limited event, which is a competitive one, you have to register the pool you are playing in order to avoid any shenanigans. So while I'm doing this, I can already see that there is a lot of multicolor cards in the set. You have to remember, I go to these pre-releases without checking the spoiler lists. I am that old to remember what it was like and I like the experience of finding out the cards there so I don't have any plans in advance. Continue onwards, we are just piling up the cards and yes I struggle with the poster versions as you can see as trying to figure out what color is that and I put it in the wrong pile straight away as it should be. One more thing to know about these release events, that they are not super serious. Uh, anyway, at Mox in the Hole, it's, they are not super serious. So half of the time I will double check with the na my neighbors of what they think about some cards. You can have a little chat about cards, you can uh, get excited about the, the, the rares you open, or you can hear about what the other guys are opening. That's one of the reasons why we don't have a sound on the video. That and I also at that point had a bit of a th sore throat. So I don't think anybody wants to hear me coughing every 10 seconds of the video. That's why we are doing this voiceover now. On to the next pack after some housekeeping and trying to find a way for these things. We are looking at a reasonable pool where at this point I am 100% sure I'm gonna play some sort of black variant. And that comes from the, the multicolor cards and then and obviously I am partial to the promo card. I want to try out whether it's good or not. So I will try and implement it. So you can see we are onto our last pack. And then afterwards I will do a bit of sorting and double checking. I am just double checking at this point my rares. Because that is kind of an indication in this set. Uh, I do feel like there are two types of rares in the set. Amazing insane rares and commander rares. The amazing insane rares you kind of want to play all the time and the commander rares you want to avoid like a plague because they are only good in multiplayer or constructed formats. And I don't feel like there is a good uh, middle ground somewhere. There are no good rares, either trash or amazing. So as you can see, I sort them by color and I identify the cards, which is probably the ones I'm not going to play. As much as I love to play Indomitable Creativity as a cool card, I am 100% sure I'm not going to do that. And after a quick glance of looking at all my rares, I noticed that most of them is blue and or black based cards. So I am looking to play blue black with something, whether it's Asper or Grixis. And at this point, I need to figure out my splash. This is the position and this is the dilemma you can see here. 
and for that I am checking the the white cards whether they are good or not then I discard every other card which is basically not not in those colors and I look for the lands which can help me to uh, so-called splash a color which means that I can 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 I basically the, my checking here is can I get away with not playing uh, the th a third type of basic land and if so how I can do that so at this point afterwards, I am starting to sort them by mana cost, so I can see whether I have a good enough mana curve or not. So I will set them aside by mana cost, basically. As you can see, I have a 2 and a 3 pile, and spells and other spells you want to separate. And trying to, to uh, prioritize the cards, and now this is the point where I start reading them, what they actually do and what they don't do. So, as you can see, at this point, I am trying to starting to organize everything and, and look for spaces. So it's going to be a lot of uh, shifting around cards, trying to stay in the, in the picture, which is, a bit of, which is a bit of a problem for me. But after I managed to find a way, so now finally we can sort the cards by mana cost. And at this point, I am start to check them and read them, whether they are good enough for the strategy or not, what the abilities are, and and so on. And also, it's to check to duplicate to have duplicates or not. And I am making a mental note to myself whether I will be playing an aggressive or a defensive style of deck. That's basically your your first question is, if you're building a limited deck whether you want to play an, an active style deck or a passive style deck because those decks need different different types of cards so you can see here i am checking the red cards now which are the red cards i would play in a blue black deck like this basically if i would be playing red so i i shift around a lot i'm looking at uh, value cards or good removal spells which mostly red has them. As you can see here, we have two two spells. Both of them are removal spells. Uh, and the creature, which creates an extra creature when, when you play it. So, then one last organization, and I'll have, have a look at the deck. For example, this card, which I'm looking at and trying to figure out whether I should play it or not, and I end up discarding it straight away it has to sacrifice one of your creatures to draw cards and i don't want to have those cards which are situational or i have to have other things to work out and here first i'm cutting the spells uh, as you can see i'm agonizing over command here as a card because i really want to play it but it's not really good in limited because of the card disadvantage of two cards it's also a known creature only and this is a cre limited is mostly a creature dominating format so things for non-creature spells are not very good on their own when they say something non-creature at this point i am discarding the red splash almost all together because i need to cut down on spells and i like to be consistent enough counting the cards again it's gonna be a recurring theme in the last few minutes as i'm trying to make sure that i don't have too many useless cards but i'm also always second guessing myself at this point i'm realizing i have too many known creature spells so therefore i start double and triple checking every single one of them and i end up making the conscious decision to cut most of the cards from my deck which are not removal spells or card advantage spells as you can see, I'm double checking that enchantment, whether it's good enough or not. It eventually turns into a creature if you skip a turn. And if you like those sort of things, then probably this is a good card for you. But I am not really the sort of guy who, who prefers that. But I put it in a creature pile just in case. But this becomes a more, uh, the most agonizing decision for me. Because again... Uh, two mo I have lots of two mana good creatures, as you can see, I'm double checking, triple checking, counting the cards again, and trying to justify have all of those cards there, but 
in the end i am making this decision i think at this point i realized that my natural inclination is to always attack 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 therefore i'm going to be in the aggressive uh, in the aggressive camp as always and if you're gonna play an aggressive deck then all of your cards have to impact the board that come down or they have to present the question to the opponent to solve that's basically how I like to play the game and that's my natural stuff as well so at this point I am start double checking all of the two mana cards which ones are good enough which ones are not good enough and I realized that I have uh, a couple of cards which requires me to cast more than one spells to be better or draw more than one cards to be better including the one of the rares then I end up looking at the five mana or more cards and then as you can see I point at Rakdos joins up check how many legendary creatures I have in my deck so they can actually do something because that, that card does nothing if you don't have any legendaries and it's just a simple re reanimation spell which I end up wanting to play but then again because it's an off color card it's a splash card I really need to justify it to myself so I double and triple check everything I end up cutting one of the four mana creatures because they are just not good enough and then I double check the, the drake which is a two mo three mana 2-3 two, flyer which should be fine in our deck but at this point I have to start cutting creatures rereading Lila, one of the legendaries I have in the deck uh, I basically realized that in order for that to do something I need to cast multicolored instants and or sorceries which I don't really have much in my deck then Marquisa is another legendary which looks good and probably gonna make the cut then I look at the other three mana cards and trying to figure out which one of them is actually doing something in my deck as you can see I quickly discard that card because my legendaries are just not impactful enough and I'm still so held on it onto that commandeer in the hope that I can do cool stuff with it. But in hindsight, it should have been cut much more earlier. One more count, and then I, I count the cards again, and I figure out that I have to cut, cut a lot of creatures. Because this is about 19 to 20 cards, uh, and I want to play 24 cards. So I only have 4 3 mana cards left. So I have to start making decisions to cut all the cards which are basically not impactful enough. Like I'm looking at the three mana cards uh, again and again and again. And uh, as you can see, I end up cutting the one of the splash cards, which is good enough because at that point I don't need that many mana fixing to get away with having only one off color card in my deck and after a few more counts a few more decisions to make and a few more ways to think about i finally make the decision which i should have done a bit earlier i think is to cut my enchant my cool looking enchantment from the two mana cards and at this point i am happy with my two mana creatures then the next count we are still at 27 28 ish cards so i need to make four cuts which is an agonizing decision for me because I really, really, really like to play all of these cards. My biggest problem with these things is that I end up second guessing myself too much and I don't have like a, an objective view on what the cards do or what the cards don't. Looking at the Drake again and trying to justify it to be in the deck. I don't know why and I don't know how ended up being that for that long should have been obvious from the start that I'm not gonna make the cut. At this point I am putting back my two mana cards and my one mana card in order to lower my curve and be more aggressive. As I said it's my natural inclination, that's my style sir and I end up cutting the five mana cards straight away. Here I am almost there where I want to be. Here I am almost where I want to be and then finally 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 Commandeer does fly away from the deck. Commander cut 
we are almost where we wanted to be at 24 cards remember the target is 24 cards right so one more count we figure out that it's 27 cards left in the deck so we need to make three more cuts and those three more cuts i can tell you friends it's always the worst time of my life because i am never sure whether i make the right decision or not and even today even after the event i'm still not sure whether i made the right decisions or i just just lucky or i just got lucky starting to move over the lens i am getting ready to just not to bother with the last three cuts and just play a 4-3 card deck this is something sometimes i end up doing because i cannot be bothered with as you will see in the end common sense will prevail which i'm actually proud of after all i try to do this as a as an instructional video so it might be important to to try and teach people to make the correct decisions but uh, it is really hard to to take this seriously for now and then agonizing over the last few cuts i end up cutting most of my four mana cards in the end eventually future gabor will cut those cards i cut the three mana three two flyer which is a really good creature but the ability uh, does not do enough for me because i don't have i don't feel like i have enough impactful instance i want to keep up and as the same goes for for everything else if i'm not gonna keep up spells then as you can i end up cutting the enchantment which turns into a creature if you don't play a spell for a turn because the way i look at it i will be the active person playing the game i will want to spend my mana every single turn to put something or some board present or pressure the, pressure the opponent i use my removal spells actively so i don't have the the luxury of uh, skipping a turn basically another count and we are finally happy kind of sort of and good to go so this point i figure out that i have enough splash so i don't need to play a basic land and i start making the calculations which basically works is the way i do it is i count the mana pips the colored mana symbols in every card and i also count the abilities as well in it separately so here as you can see i will end up having 18 black mana symbols in the deck so out of 24 cards which i'm going to play 18 black mana pips out of the 24 so that is three fourths of my deck 75 percent of my deck so 75 percent of my lands has to be able to tap for black mana now i do the same with blue which will end up being 15 out of 24 so i do a quick calculation here in my head because my mobile phone with my calculator is currently recording which is 60 percent of my deck right and the red i i decide as i said i make the decision to to not to have any mountains so at this point i am playing 16 or 17 lands that's the question here and i have three non-basic lands so i ended up playing 17 lands and i have 14 spaces left right for for decks so so 75 percent of my lands has to tap for black mana which means that i have out of 17 12 of them needs to be tapping for black i already have two in there in my non-basic land pile so in order to do that i need to add nine more so i end up doing these calculations and then uh, i figure out that i need 12 lands to tap for black mana so i need nine swamps all together added into the deck as basic lands and the rest of them the other six lands as remember we have 12 there and i'm gonna play 17 sorry the rest is f extra five which gives us the required uh, 12 and 8 if we are if our calculations are correct so that's 17 lands after that uh, i go and grab my basic lands and then we are ready to go the situation is fine it ended up working fine the deck ended up working relatively well and uh, luckily we will be able to do a trio record with this deck and win the whole event Thank you very much for joining me and uh, hope you hope you like this sort of different style of thing if you do don't forget to like and subscribe as always don't forget to point out the flaws in my logic 
or the or the situations where I made a mistake and do let us know in the comments below if you would like to see a live stream of a similar sort of event in the future because this is something I was always planning to do eventually in our YouTube channel. Thanks for joining us. See you next time. Bye.